So this is Moorhead tonight. This is what we do before the show. And by we, I mean me. I drink out of a cup that is from a particular uh, fast food restaurant. But I can't show it or elsewise I think we'll get sued. Because no company wants to be associated with Moorhead tonight. Uh, with the exception of this, uh, this one medication, it's, I, it's apparently for shut-ins. They give uh, people with agoraphobia and stuff. Apparently, that's our key demographic. And so I'm currently taking money under the table from them. Don't tell anyone. Shh. <laughs> uh, pesky IRS, always ruining my day. So we have a, I don't know what I'm doing now. Uh, we have a good show lined up. I say that every episode, and it's never good. Uh, but this time we do. Uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> we're going to, well, I don't know, we'll get into all that after the monologue, which is going to come up after our little video thingy after this. Go to it. Thank you very much. Welcome to Moorhead Tonight. Second episode on season two. This is an insult in the UK. So to my UK friends, uh, I'm very sorry that you live in the UK because it's always just terrible and cold and rainy there apparently. So anyway, uh, Moorhead Tonight's made it to two seasons, two episodes. I feel like it's uh, everything's just, just going great for us. Uh, that's what I've heard anyway from my mom who watches the show and that's it. That's the only person. I think she watches it several times just over and over to get the views up, which I'm very appreciative of. Uh, speaking of watching things, I watched, the, uh, <laughs> I watched the Flat Earth documentary on Netflix over the weekend. That, uh, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting watch. It's really weird. Like It's filled with all of these just like people that are just disconnected from reality. They don't make any sense. They're completely illogical. Oh, no, you know what? That was Campus Clife I was watching. That I'm sorry, I forgot. Ha! Ha, 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 ha! I got him on that one. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure Chaz is a flat earther. Chaz Jenkins. He's either a flat earther or a lizard person. He's one of the two. Or maybe he believes in lizard people. I don't know. I don't know where we're going with this. Uh, Netflix worries me, by the way. They have so many Netflix originals. I sit there and I look at the screen and I don't know what, it's overwhelming. I look at all of these options that they have and I, I don't know what to, to watch. I look at it, I feel like I'm back in high school taking tests, right? And you look at question one, you're like, I don't know what the, I'm just going to go to the next one. And then I look at the next one, I'm like, I'm even more confused now. And you just keep doing that until you get to the end of the test and you're like, I, I don't know anything, anything at all. So that's actually how I feel when I watch Netflix and it's weird because that's kind of what I did when I took the ACT when I was in high school. Like, this is a real story. Uh, I took it twice. The f I got it the same score both times. The first time, I tried really hard. The second time, I just looked at my watch. And wherever the second hand was is what answer I put down. So if the second hand was between 12 and 3, the answer was A. If it was between 3 and 6, the answer was B. 6 and 9, the, episode was C, or the answer was C. And the uh, 9 and 12, the answer would be D. That's a real thing that I did and got the same score as when I tried hard. So it's no wonder I'm 31 and back in college with no job or career, because apparently I'm an idiot. That's me. All right, my mom's going to watch this too and be like, yeah, you, she's going to call me later. She's going to be like, you shouldn't call yourself an idiot. You're a very, she doesn't talk like this, but maybe she could. I don't, you never know. Maybe she'll go to another country, pick up their accent. It'd be great. <clears throat> Uh, my monitor just went out, so I can't see myself. But I'll just look at the camera, because I shouldn't look at myself during these shows. I should look right at you people. You're the ones that I'm connected with. Anyway, Netflix, that's what I was talking about. My monitor's back on now. Netflix is what I was talking about. I like Netflix. I stare at all their shows that I'm never going to watch. And then I end up just watching The Office again. So I'm paying $11.99 to just watch The Office over and over again. I own it on DVD. I have the set. I have a box set of The Office. I don't need to pay Netflix to watch The Office, but I do. You know why? Because I don't feel like changing DVDs. I'm paying Netflix $12 to keep from switching DVDs. That's me. That's sad, right? Like That's what technology is now. It's like we're paying for things like that. That all the years advanced of like from the... Enlightenment age all the way to here has led us to this. If you brought like Thomas Edison or Nikola Tesla or some great inventor to today, they would be so disappointed with what we've done with technology. 
I mean, look what you can do. You can, like, they'd be like, oh, have you cured cancer? Have you, you know, you know fixed world hunger and all that? No, we haven't done that, but we can cut a boat in half and stick it back together with this black goo. Oh, that's almost as good as, you know, eradicating leukemia. Uh, oh, don't feel bad about us because, you know, we can make tortilla bowls anytime we want, so that will, you know, forget about world hunger. When you can eat anything out of a tortilla bowl, that's kind of the same thing. And I don't even want to even get into what you can do to a flashlight these days. But anyway, oh, gosh, I don't even know if I can tell that joke. I guess, I guess you have to actually understand what I'm talking about. So if you understood the joke about the flashlight, you're a disgusting pervert. And if you don't, then you're a liar. So that's good too. Oh, gosh, we are... This is where I could really use a sidekick, just so you know. Uh, hey, si you know what? I do have a sidekick. Uh, this is going to be, I'm going to get a little closer to you, Grant. This is going to be my sidekick. Now, I'm just going to, in post, I'm just going to put a face on my hand that I could talk to. Like, oh, boy, don't you just hate when things happen, sidekick? Oh, boy, how do you do, I? No, oh, you are the best sidekick. Say your, say your catchphrase. Don't touch those ostriches. <laughs> don't, don't touch those ostriches. This guy, I swear, I don't know where you come up with it. This guy. Anyway, we got a great show for you tonight. I've lost it. We've got a great show for you tonight uh, from uh, Career Services. Uh, Haley Murphy is going to be here and talk about all of their events that are going on. It's probably going to be terribly edited. Don't worry, buddy. You're still my sidekick. You can stay right here. Uh, we also have, apparently, Monet McLaughlin that works on the show here. Apparently she has some sort of YouTube series or something she's going to be uh, plugging here on the show. So we're going to show that and uh, a lot more. And by a lot more, I mean probably like the clothes. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get to all of that uh, right after this on Moorhead Night. Welcome back to Moorhead Tonight, moving right along. Uh, such an entertaining show, wouldn't you say so? Uh, yeah, he would. Uh, so, uh, I, we have many people that work on this show, many talented people, and Grant Johnson, who work on this show, and one of these people is Monet McLaughlin, who I just found out has this, like, renovation series that she does for, like, some sort, I don't know if it's YouTube or MySpace or... The Zanga, some sort of thing that the kids watch these days. Maybe it's at Instagrams I keep hearing about. I don't know. But I hear that she has, it's almost like a uh, uh, love it or list it or flip this house or uh, some of those types of shows. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but apparently she hosts this show and she had a very special episode where she flipped a new center, which is right next door to Studio A here where we film this illustrious show. So I thought since she's done this, and she came to me and said, hey, I've got this really cool project, so I thought, and the fact that she's the second producer on the show and I have to show this, I thought, hey, what if we show it on the show, have some cross-promotion, and really start to, you know, build her brand. So that's what we did. So here is the, I don't know if it's a debut episode, it's an episode of, uh, of Monet's, uh, like, renovation show. Hey guys, it's Monet. I'm back with another video. So today I got a call from Chaz Jenkins and apparently the new center room is in dire need of a makeover. It needs repair. There's, I guess it's just chaos in there. So we're going to go in there and see what's going on. Are you Chaz? Yes. Thank you for coming on such short notice. It's no problem. This is what I do. So what seems to be the problem? Well, I mean, look around. After looking the place over, it definitely needs my help, and not only my help, but my entire team's help. So I'm going to get everyone down here, we're going to get some blueprints up, look everything over, and figure out what we can do to help this mess. So we finally got the room done, it's remodeled, it looks great, and I can't wait to show Chaz what we've come up with. I think he's going to love it. Alright Chaz, the room is done, you can come in. Oh 
my god! It's amazing! Are you okay? I'm just getting so emotional. We gutted the room from the ground up. We got new whiteboards, new tables, new chairs, new computers, and I think that we gave this room everything it needs to be a successful newsroom. And the piece de resistance to this entire project was definitely the Harry Potter cutouts that we added to really spice up everything and bring the entire look together. All right, so what do you think? It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I wouldn't change a single thing. Now before you go, I wanted to ask you one more tiny little favor. Yes, of course. Can you fix this? Oh, honey, there's some things that I can't even fix. Well, I, you know, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Chaz once again shows up into something that I put on my show because he's like, he, what can I, how can I describe Chaz? He's like black mold. Uh, he'll be here forever because Moorhead won't get rid of him. And uh, he'll kill you if you're around him long enough. I've discovered that. And you know what? I'm not even going to get mad anymore. Look at me. Look at this guy. Does this guy look mad to you? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So I, I'm just going to move on and I'm just going to live my life. I'm going to live my best life. I, Chaz who? I don't even know. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a break. And when we come back, uh, Haley Murphy from Career Service is going to be here. And I, I'm just, I, I, I ain't even mad at all. <laughs> We'll be right back. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Ah. Are you interested in becoming a service dog sitter or handler? Four Paws for Ability at MSU allows members to get involved with the Service Dog Association. During your membership, you could help future service dogs get used to a public setting and get accustomed to staying on the clock in a home environment. For more information, follow MSU 4 Paws or email msusda at outlook.com. Welcome back to Moorhead Tonight. Our guest joining us right now from Career Services, Haley Murphy. Haley, nice to have you here. Nice to be here. So as I understand, you are actually a Moorhead State grad from uh, from this department, from yes. Media. Yes, yeah. I graduated in 2014, so it's mm -hmm. been quite a while. Um, I was a convergent media major, one of the first people actually to graduate with the new program of convergent media. Right, so yeah. I did um, New Center mostly. I directed, produced, um, as well as anchored and reported for that, as well as hosting Morehead Today, which was kind of a variation of this show. Right. Um, pretty much did that whole show single-handedly. <laughs> so it was something. <laughs> I know what it's like to work on a show single-handed. Not really. We have so many hardworking people here. So. I do the least amount of work, actually, on this show <laughs> a little bit uh, to some extent. But uh, so now you're working in career services. Mm -hmm. How did that come about that you ended up here? Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually, my senior year, attended the career fair. Uh -huh. Highly recommend attending. <laughs> um, and spoke with a representative from Enterprise. I was actually trying to get to like the back corner where the TV stations were. Yeah. They kind of cut me off, intercepted me, had a conversation with them, and I was interested in staying in Moorhead. Um, and I, I wasn't sure if news was the route I wanted to go. Ended up getting a phone call, I guess the week after I graduated, offering me a position or an interview with Enterprise, which yeah. I did a couple rounds of interviews, worked there for a couple years, um, and decided it was time for a change. Applied here at MSU to, to work with students, and I've enjoyed every moment of it since. So for those that don't know about career services, because I feel like it used to be in a, a house really close to, to Breckenridge. Yeah. They moved it now to the first floor of the library, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for those that don't know like what career services could you give us just like a little synopsis of what career services is Yeah, we're basically here there's there's three of us full-time people there um, in career services to walk you through the whole process from choosing your major as a freshman and, and figuring out kind of what your career goals are mm -hmm. to seeing those career goals actually happen as you you know approach the finish line during your senior year so every step of the way applying resumes applications doing internships getting experience. Um, we're really just here to help you grow and set you up for success before you graduate and for many years after you graduate. It's sort of just from, you know, listening to and hearing about things about career services. It reminds me a lot of like high school guidance counselors, you know, where it's like yeah. you, you help kind of guide people where they're supposed to go. I know people have advisors and things like that, but you sort of help prepare them for the real world 
in what are you going to do when you leave here? Because that's yeah. a lot of what... It's a little bit, sometimes the conversations we have with students are a little bit of a reality check. Like, you know, they might yeah. come to me saying, well, I want to move to a new city. I want to end up, you know, somewhere like Denver. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, have you looked at the cost of living in Denver? Right. Do you know it's not the same as Moorhead? And, right. and I think sometimes for students, we kind of do have to be that guidance, guidance counselor and, and almost like parental guidance yeah. at times. I think most students find out that certain things are legal in Denver, and then they're like, well, let's just go there. Yeah, it's so. a happening place currently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. It's mile high is what I understood. <laughs> so uh, when you're advising students, or not, I guess advising would be the wrong word, but when you're helping to guide yeah. students and stuff, what are some of the biggest kind of reoccurring issues that students run into that you all kind of help with the most? Um, the first thing we always kind of run into a lot from the freshman level or maybe the first semester of the sophomore year is they liked something coming out of high school, they pursued that as a major, and now they're realizing they don't really like it. Yeah. So they're like, you know, what can I do? Is it too late to change? So we kind of walk them through the process of exploring their, their personality and their right. interest and their skills to see, you know, what other avenues they can take. The other side of that we see is seniors who have, have done their entire program and maybe done really well, but get to the finish line and don't really know what to do with their degree. So right. helping them explore the different options, you know, some degrees like nursing, well, you're obviously going to become a nurse, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, a convergent media degree doesn't necessarily mean you're going into broadcasting. There's a whole world out there. So we help try to open their eyes to the different avenues that they can take once they graduate. Right. And I know from firsthand experience that sometimes you can even get your degree and find yourself back here as a 31 year old college student. I've mentioned that before, but I'm going to mention it again. So that's, that's what we're going to do. It does happen on occasion. So uh, now there are, up, there are events that you all have all throughout the mm -hmm. year, both semester stuff. In fact, we're taping this, spoiler alert, this isn't live. Uh, <laughs> we're taping this on uh, March 6th, I think is today. Uh, so yesterday was the career uh -huh. fair. So that's, that's behind us. This, I believe this episode will be coming out March 22nd ish. So what kind of events? I know we have the etiquette dinner is a big yes. one, but what are some other events? Is that, is there so any the other? etiquette dinner is our uh, last event for the semester, uh -huh. actually, before we get into you know, gearing up for next fall's events. Right. Um, the etiquette dinner is one of our bigger events, and personally, my favorite. I've now experienced it as a student, as an employer with Enterprise, and now from the side of career services. Oh. So it's definitely, I would say, hands down. The career fair is cool, and I like it, but hands down, the etiquette <laughs> dinner is my favorite. Right, and of course, anytime you get a chance to get uh, you know, a pretty decent meal for yeah. $10. Well, yeah, There's know. cheesecake included. Cheesecake. Some people will go to great lengths with cheesecake. Some, <laughs> a lot of people in Denver like cheesecake, from what I understand. So, because we have this upcoming event and because we have uh, the etiquette dinner here, I thought it would be interesting. I don't know if it'll be entertaining, but it'll be interesting if we could do like a kind of do's and don'ts. I could ask yeah. you some questions oh, well, about. I remember them. Okay. Now, of course, I've got <laughs> the really. If we could take the three shot here, yeah, we've got uh, the Fine high China. grade paper plates. Okay. Uh, found some stale crackers in Dr. Plum's office, so I've got that, oh, and. Okay. Uh, She's retiring. What does she need crackers for? <laughs> um, I got some uh, potted meat. That's the good stuff. It's made with, uh, what is it? Mechanically separated chicken. You don't want to go with the hand separated. That's, you never know what's going to happen. And then, of course, our cutlery. Only the finest here. So, I'll put my lunchbox to the side. Now, if we're sitting down with an employer, and I assume that we're going to... Oh, that's the good stuff. We're going to be... Uh, I hope that's not have a smell. Yeah, well, it, it might. It's it's been expired for a while. Um, <laughs> so here's my first question. Mm -hmm. We're sitting down to eat. Oh gosh, I'm what's, not gonna remember this. No, what side of the plate does the spork go on? Because I know the fork goes on the left and the spoon goes on the right, but the spork. You leave the spork at Taco Bell. I don't know. That's the only answer. I'm already <laughs> indifferent about this. <laughs> All right, so you've sat down with your meal. You've ordered your potted meat. Um, what kind of, so you're eating your crackers. Do you just talk with your mouth full with the crackers? Do you try to wait? Do you choke them down? How does that work? Well, I would say crackers kind of fall in the bread category. Uh -huh. 
And I've, I've been intrigued to learn every etiquette dinner and be reminded of how you should eat your bread. Oh. And you, you tear portions off. You don't ever bite into the bread. So I would kind of think maybe you do the same with the cracker. I've been you, eating, you should break it and take small bites of it. I've been eating bread incorrectly for years. We all have. It's okay. Oprah is, will be so sad to find <laughs> that out. She loves bread. Um, I'm not really going to eat this. When I planned this out in my head, just breaking the fourth wall here, when I planned this out in my head, I thought, ah, oh, it would be funny to eat that. No, I'm not eating that. That's gross. Um, and also, Kyle King from News Center <laughs> ate one of these crackers. Pretty sure they've been stale for a while. Uh, oh, also, now, here's the thing, too. I know that if you're being fancy, right, uh -huh. the people should maybe dress up for this etiquette dinner. I think you all recommend to be like business casual yeah. or business. Mm -hmm. But what about, and I've seen people do this, gloves. People wear gloves when they're fancy. Now, I don't have gloves, but I do have socks. And I thought, faux pas or go for it. Which would you? I think gloves are best for the wait staff who are serving you. Well, I would steer clear of gloves. I tell you, I, I worked very briefly in waitstaff, and they did not appreciate me putting socks <laughs> on my hands. I don't understand what's happening with this segment at this point. But I know you have some things. I don't know if, if you have yeah, anything Yeah, well, I just like brought to... you one, one thing I brought you um, okay. kind of for you. You might need it as you're approaching graduation number right. two here. Yes. We have these little interview survival kits that oh. we give out in our office. Uh -huh. um, they've got sample interview questions that kind of don't really pertain to any particular major, really just looking at like your soft skills, like communication, okay. critical thinking. Um, I brought you the calendar of events too, to let everybody know when the Etiquette Networking Dinner okay. is. Can I shamelessly plug it? Oh, absolutely, Tuesday, yes. April 23rd at 4.30 p.m. It's going right. to be an ADUC. $10 by, you know, buys you your meal. It's a mm -hmm. three-course meal. Um, it's a really like laid-back event. We have a lady who hosts the Etiquette portion. She's really fun and entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, tries to make it a great learning experience for everyone, no matter if you're about to graduate or you're a freshman just wanting to come for fun. Um, and the other thing I brought was our career guide. Okay. This is kind of detailing from freshman to senior, kind of what our office can offer you, as well as how to make a resume, how to interview, just tips and information. Um, and also directs you to our office in case anyone wants to make a one-on-one -on -one appointment. Come yes. see me. I can help you figure out what to do with your convergent media degree. And, and one thing I do you. want to point out too is yeah. that during this etiquette dinner, there are actual employers that yeah, are there. Yeah, so, so it's going to be employers and graduate schools that are going to mm -hmm. be there. Um, we try to get employers from a range of field. A lot of them are just younger recruiters that right. work for these companies. So they've been in student shoes. They know what it feels like to be kind of nervous and, and not how like not know how to have these conversations. So they're really here to guide people. It's not to get a job. It's to right. figure out how to network and exactly. learn those skills so you can get a job later right. on. And so you're going to be working with people that know what they're doing, know what they're talking about. So you're not yeah. just sitting across from someone else that's a student thinking, well, you guys just pretend like you're on an interview. So you're getting some real world yeah. experience. Well, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate all of these things. Now, of course, we end our interviews. And I'm sure you've watched many of our episodes more tonight. All of them. No one has. But uh, we end our interviews by having the, uh, the interviewee uh, touch my monkey. I've yet to have anyone from, like, I've had one professor, I guess. I had Steve Middleton touch my monkey, episode one, and everyone's just followed in his <laughs> shoes. But no one, like, in, in the offices. Like, I've, I think of you as someone in an office. So this I could am be someone a, in an office. I work in a cubicle. This it's would true. be a big moment. All right. If you would like Can I hold to. it? Yes, Actually, absolutely. Actually, I want to hold him. Does he have a name? Oh, he claps. No, I don't, he might have a name tag. I'm not sure. It's very old. Jolly Chimp. Sure. Jolly Chimp. I like That's him right. a lot. Uh, we had Jeffrey Hill name him. Jolly Good. So, Jeffrey Hill likes to say <laughs> Jolly Good, so that's the joke. Uh, uh, <laughs> Haley Murphy, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You need to see Career Services, of course. Go online to MSU's website, check them out. Or maybe we'll even get fancy and put like the URL down at the, at the bottom. bottom. Yeah, That'd or, be cool. or Haley Murphy's email. Contact yeah. Haley Murphy. There it I is. I love it. Post, post edit thing. There it is. Uh, we will be right back to close up shop on more tonight, right after this. Hi, I'm Jay Morgan, president of Moorhead State University. You're watching MSU TV. All right, we have made it to the end of yet another uh, fun time adventure here on Moorhead Tonight. So, what did we learn on the show tonight? Well, we learned that uh, career services can help you out even if you are, you know, basically washed up in life, like me. Right? I go down there, boom, they can get me a job working in any place in the world. That's my endorsement. That's probably not true, but you, know, you all don't need to know this. So, 
Uh, what else did we learn? We learned that uh, Chaz is like black mold, and I'm never going to get rid of him. So, unless I take like some sort of hot, uh, like wax or something, and like a power washer, and maybe some sort of like putty knife, I think that could work. Oh, and I learned that uh, I can do post production to put a face on my hand. Go ahead, come on back up here, sidekick. Oh, look at that. We're going to close the show together. Uh, what's his name? I don't have a name for him. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, Thaddeus. Oh, Thaddeus, you and your ways. Uh, say your catchphrase. Don't touch those ostriches. Don't touch that ostrich. He said it. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, we've learned that I've lost my mind on this episode, which is fine. It's, gonna, it's fun. We're going to enjoy the rest of the season with my hand. Sidekick. That's what we're going to do. So, with that being said, with that threat being put out there, I'd like to say uh, goodbye, and until next time, make good decisions. We'll see you. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true, but the world is pretty cold. You might need a sweater too. I'ma put a ride on ya, get from California. Trying to make it a life, it's school that never taught ya. Dreams of my own. I found some stale crackers in Dr. Plum's office, so I've got that.